from coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let Praise the Lord covers the major Christian events in America and across the world from the heart of Europe. To the tip of Africa. From the centers of Asia. Central and South America. Welcome to the number one Christian network in the world. Joining us from Atlanta, Georgia, are founder of Rennie McLean Ministries, Apostle Rennie McLean. From King Jesus Ministries, Dr. Joel Kazoria. Founder of Brian Carn Ministries, Prophet Brian Corn. From King Jesus Ministries, the New Wine Worship Team. Ready to take the calls, prayer partners from around America. Atmosphere is electric. Something is about to be released upon your life. Miracle signs and wonders. God is about to speak to you. God is about to do something special. We welcome you and I want you to be ready. I want you to receive and prepare your heart. How to prepare for your season. How can you pre prepare? God is doing something special in your life, and I want you to be ready. If you have your phone, please give us a call. Give us a call right now. Let us know. What's the miracle? What's, what, what you want from God today? I got powerful men of God in the stage, and I'm very sure. I'm very sure God will do something special. Can I hear an amen from you? So I understand. God is moving. You know, when we get to the first, the beginning of the year, everybody's asking, what is the will of God for my life? What God is saying to me? I know you want to hear from God. I know what you, you want to hear what, what God is saying and what God is doing. Remember what the book of Revelation says? He says what the Spirit is saying to the church. So you are asking question, God, I want you to speak to me. Because it's important that you discern the times and season, seasons that we're living in now. So let's get ready. I know. Can, can you put your hand together, people here? I want you to give us a call. I want to thank you, uh, Jan. Thank you. Thank you, the TBN family. Thank you for sowing your seed. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you. We welcome you. Jesus, I just want to tell you, nothing is impossible for God. Nothing. And I know many of you are watching, and then you're saying, I'm sick in my body. I need prayer. We're going to pray for you. And, and are you there watching also saying, well, I want to sow a seed into TBN. You can do it right now. Amen. I mean, there's so many things that God will do. In the meantime, I just want you to listen. New wine music. Powerful, powerful. Can you put your hand together and let's receive praises to the king. There's an electric atmosphere in this place. Amen. Praises to the king. New wine. Woo. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 Can you put your hands together like this? And as we praise him, his glory falls and the impossible becomes possible tonight. Hey! We praise you, King of Glory.
With the shouting and praise, we're singing to the King. Great I am, Almighty, your kingdom never ends. With the shouting and praise, we're singing to the King. Great I am, Almighty, your kingdom never ends. Can you jump? We lift up our praises to you. Your glory is falling on us with miracles, signs, and wonders. Your kingdom of power is here. We lift up our praises to you. Your glory is falling on us with miracles, signs, and wonders. Your kingdom of power is here. Hey! Hey! Let's rejoice in the Lord this evening. With this shouting and praise, we're singing to the King. The great I am, Almighty, your kingdom never ends. With this shouting and praise, we're singing to the King. The great I am, Almighty, your kingdom never ends. Yeah. We lift up our praises to you. Your glory is falling on us with miracles, signs, and wonders. Your kingdom of power is here. We lift up our praises to you. Your glory is falling on us. People can rejoice this evening. We lift up our praises to you. Your glory is falling on us. With miracles, signs, and wonders. Your kingdom of power is here. We lift up our praises to you. Your glory is falling on us. With miracles, signs, and wonders. Your kingdom of power is here. Let's break it down. Come on, TV, and tonight, let's lift up extravagant praise. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God, Jesus, Jesus. Let me tell you, this is something powerful. I want you to be ready. Get ready. Open your heart because God is about to do something in your life. And I want to take the time to welcome pastors and leaders that come in to uh, support TBN. And I want to welcome New Beginning Family Worship Center, Pastor Albert. And Charlene Duplices, can you put your hand together, people? We welcome them. The cost of the anointing, uh, Pastor uh, Evangelist Bianca, can you put your hand together? Uh, welcome them, uh, Pastor Loretta Cooper. Uh, again, Apostle Colette um, Gum Gone. Can you put your hand together? Pastor G. V. S. Pastor Julius and Julia, uh, Pastor Julius, where are they? Over here. Can you put your hand together? <laughs> Welcome all of them. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for your support to TVN. Put your hand together. Welcome them, all of them. Come on. <laughs> Jesus, come on. And I, I'm privileged to introduce very, very powerful men of God, starting here with my dear friend, Apostle. Rini, you've been here many times. Bless you. Um, founder of Rini McLean Ministries, a call to ministry when he was uh, 10 years old. 
and several provocation and how, tell me how you doing today i'm doing fine god's good <laughs> god bless prophet you. brian welcome Thank can you, you put your hand together welcome prophet brian um how you doing welcome to the, to the show i'm doing supernatural you're doing That'll supernatural, work. <laughs> supernatural. <laughs> Pastor Casoria, welcome. Thank you, sir. Oh, man. And everybody, please welcome. Let me introduce to you, there's so many people watching and even in the audience. At the beginning of the year, everyone is looking for and seeking the word of God for that moment. Yes. Unfortunately, uh, we have removed the apostles and prophets, which are the two ministries that God has brought into the church to bring the word of the Lord of the now. And that's the reason we did not see that revelation of the word of the Lord of the now. And, but I think the body of Christ right now is, 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 even the world is saying, I want to hear from God. What God is saying and what God is doing. The Bible talks about times and seasons. Mm -hmm. We need to understand and make the difference between times and seasons. Season is the length of time given by God to you. But nothing supernatural happened in time. That's right. Because time is a falling thing. That's good. And season is something special. It's marked by special events. Amen. That's supernatural good. events in our life. Very so good. we don't understand. People confuse us sometimes between times and season. In time, nothing supernatural happened. In season is when God intervenes. Very good. Is Very when good. the supernatural is normal when somebody is in a season. I am pretty sure there are many people watching saying, I want to enter in my season. Mm -hmm. But there's one uh, prerequisite to enter in your season. You need to know your purpose. Right. Because every purpose, every purpose is connected with your season. Amen. And your season is connected with your purpose. So many that are watching, seeking and saying, I need to know what is my season. And you see, when it's your season, you will be in demand. When you're in your season, <laughs> a lot of people that's good. That's good. will call you. When you're in your season, the favor of God will be upon you. Mm -hmm. And doors that you try to open never open. When, when it's your season, doors will amen. be open. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? So I have to put the foundation. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 says that everything on earth has its time and its season. Meaning, and it put the difference between time and season. Jesus' time on the earth was 30 years. The season was three and a half years. Good. So in that three and a half years, just one season of his life changed the world. Amen. We just need one season to change the world. Amen. So I know you're watching. You're saying, yeah, I need my season. But we need to understand and to understand and discern the time. What happened, I've seen people sometimes, they get into their season, but they don't understand. They don't discern the moment to enter in that season. Mm -hmm. But I want to hear, it's important that you understand what are we going? What are we saying? Do you want to hear what God is saying? Do you want to hear what direction? What's, what God, how to prepare? It doesn't matter if you know in your season, you don't know how to enter in it. Yeah. You must be prepared for your season. Every time when you see, now it's cold. <laughs> I came from Miami and it's very hot. But we're going to go Atlanta. It's very cold. So I am prepared for this season. I am prepared for this weather. And many times the believer, that season, God brings that season, but we're not prepared. So I want you to be prepared. I want you to God speak to your life specifically what God is saying, what God is doing. And there's apostles and prophets in this round table to hear and to speak the word of the Lord because God is saying something. God, the spirit of God moved for two things. Every time you see the Spirit of God moving, you see the Spirit of God doing two things. Number one, when he's saying something and when he's doing something. Every time the Spirit moves, you will say when God is saying something and when God is doing something. God will say something and will do something now. Let's believe because we know we understand there's this historical God and many preachers come and then talk to you about historical God did this and God that that, that and and I understand and I like it I love it but I want to know the God of the now Amen. I want to know what God is saying what God is doing now do you believe that yeah so understanding and doing this introduction I will hear Apostle Rini what God is saying for the church and for the world today there's two things that I hear in my spirit, ma'am, 
And this is what I hear. Number one, there is a new dimension that is opening up to the church world. And let me explain what that dimension is. This is the dimension of the glory. We're at, the time, we're at a time right now where everything that man has known is actually exhausted. And you can tell when man has exhausted what he knows because he keeps repeating it. But there's a time now when the scripture says that the glory is to be revealed. And so there are things right now that's being revealed that's never been heard before or seen. And we can miss it by limiting God to what we've known before. Before. Apostle, Apostle, I want you to, uh, there are many people watching saying, mm -hmm. what is the glory of God? It's the same thing as the anointing. It's the same thing as faith. Mm -hmm. How would you put those people saying, what is the glory of God? The glory of, well, let, let, me, let me say, let me give two definitions to it. In Hebrew, the word glory is the word panim. Panim means face. Now, it's interesting how the church has always wanted to be at the feet of God. <laughs> but panim means face. And so your relationship with God is not feet to feet. It is face to face. And so we're in a time right now where God is bringing his people into his glory. Now, there's many churches that have his presence, not his glory. And we're in a time right now where God is manifesting specific things in the glory. And let me just touch on that because you said something that made the Holy Ghost jump inside of me. The Bible says to everything, this is the season where every believer must know their thing. They must know who they are, what they're called to, and what their assignment is. That's number one. The Bible says times and seasons. You are given one purpose. But purposes are regulated by seasons. Yes. Yes. And so until you know your seasons, without you knowing your seasons, you're not in gear. And what happens is today, you're seeing this happening even in the world. There's a lot of repeats going on because people do not understand something new is about to break forth. And I'll tell you what it is. It is nothing more than the glory of God being revealed. Amen. Okay, I believe I believe there are many people watching and when the apostle was explaining about you know teaching the about the glory of God the glory of God is the sovereignty of God yes when we move in the anointing the anointing is the power of God to do what we call to do but the anointing is the sovereignty of God doing whatever he wants whoever he wants it and moving sovereignly and that's what he was referring to there. This is a season where God supernaturally is moving around the earth. Yes, he supernaturally. Is. Do you Amen. believe that? Yeah. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Super, in other words, he's moving sovereignly. In other words, yes. he doesn't ask permission to anybody. <laughs> he wants to do something special. Prophet, what are you hearing from God? Well, you know, the Bible talks about in Chronicles around the 12th chapter, you had all of these tribes of Israel who were very vast in number, 30,000 in one tribe, tribe of Asher. Another tribe had about 12,000, 60,000. But there was another tribe called the tribe of Issachar. Now, there was only 200 of those. Now, the other ones had thousands. Mm -hmm. The tribe of Issachar only had 200. Yes. And all of the other tribes bowed to them mm -hmm. because they had something that the other ones didn't have. Understanding of the times. Mm. Yes. And in the hour we're living in Come now, on, yes. we're going to have to get a hold of people. I tell folks, if God ain't talking to you, you need to get around somebody he's talking to. <laughs> because <laughs> the, the hour we're living in, we don't need another political uprising. We don't need another conqueror on the sea. But what we need is a word from the Lord. And when you look at the ministry of Jesus, his ministry was not built on truth. It was built on revelation. Truth is where God has been. Revelation is where God is going. Mm. So a lot of our churches, they are preaching the truth. They mm. preach truth and they preach it well. Mm. But their messages are stale. They're expired. They have mm. to download messages off the internet because <laughs> God ain't talking to them. But once you spend time in his glory, you can get a fresh word come on. from God. Yes, come on. And so I believe in this season, God is calling us 
back to that place, you know, in the secret place. That's what the Lord said for me yes, yes. in 2015. He said, tell the saints in 2015, I'm not going to compete with your distractions. Wow. He's not going to compete with Facebook. He's not going to compete with Twitter. He's not going to compete with Instagram. <laughs> he said, he that dwelleth. Now, a lot of us don't dwell. We visit. Mm. See, we take vacations to the secret place. Yeah, right. But we don't dwell in the secret place. Right, right, right. And Matthew 6 tells us what the secret place is. He said, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. Mm. And what thou doest in secret, yeah. he will reward you openly. Mm -hmm. The secret yes, place yes, is yes. a place of prayer. Yeah. And God is talking to you preachers, telling you to get back on your face and get back on your knees yeah. and get back to a place of prayer. Don't get me started, Bob. You know, <laughs> come on, you know, come on. Talking, you, know, you know, it's very I powerful what so. you were saying about prayer. Yeah. Um, if you notice the, 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 the ministry of Jesus, the foundation, the engine, the power behind his ministry was prayer. prayer. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. How somebody that is completely pure, somebody without sin, sin, can move in such a power and because behind that it was prayer. Mm -hmm. And now we such we don't take prayer seriously. No, sir. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason we don't see the supernatural in the church. Well, well you, you know, Pastor, I, I, I heard somebody say that we don't have to pray because Jesus prayed. <laughs> we don't got to pray no more. Well, mm -hmm. well, if a man who was sinless... Yes. Who did no sin. Yes. Neither on. was any gown found in his mouth. Yes. If he had to pray. Come on. I know me with my Jack up self got to pray. You understand? <laughs> so, I, I got to pray. Hey, come so, on. Uh, I, I, I need God, you know. Yes. I, you know, I, I, I need his presence. Yes. I, I, I need the glory of God to, to minister things in my life that no one knows about. The secret things. Uh, things that we don't share with nobody else. Yes. When you get in his presence, glory to God, the glory of God shines on that sun. Yes, yes. And shows us the things we Come have to on. get right. So. Pastor yeah. Kasoria, Praise tell me, Lord. what Hallelujah. are you hearing? Well, I think I want to pick up on something that uh, Apostle Rennie said, and he talked about a new thing that's beginning. You know, there's a song that says, it's your thing, do what you want to do. <laughs> and I'm afraid that'll preach. I'm afraid that the church has been trying to do its thing instead of doing God's thing. Isaiah 43, 19 says that behold, God is announcing himself back to the church. The church has been going through breakthrough after breakthrough. And then when they get through the breakthrough, they look and see that they're still doing the same thing that they were doing in the other breakthrough. But God spoke to me this morning in prayer when I was in tabernacle with him. And he said, there's no more breakthrough, but I'm getting ready to break the church out. I'm getting ready to reveal my glory in a new way, in a new dimension, in a new time. And God says, I'm going to do it right now. He says, it's begin to happen Amen. now. Glory. And he says this, do you not know it yet? Right. So there's yeah. a place in knowing God and understanding God that we have to get to, to get to that place yes. where God is going to move in the supernatural now. We understand, um, and I know you were hearing from God last year. You were sharing about, you know, how we enter into rest in God. Yes. This is one of the things that will happen this year. As yes. a matter of fact, we already started it. Yes. On entering into rest. Yes. One of the things that, um, that I've, that's very interesting is this, is that there are times in ministry, and, and I'm careful how I say this, there are times in ministry where, because we've done it so long, we know the mechanics of how it works. And what happens is, is that we get trapped in our callings and we get trapped in the mechanisms of the gift. And what happens is you can end up working it without God. And, what, and what's happening now is this, is that when, when God's taking you to a new place, what happens is this, is you have to cut almost anything with God I've watched it, and this, people may differ with this. Almost anything in God, I've noticed, begins with a visitation. And all visitations happen when you've come to the end of a season and something new is about to begin. That means what used to work is not going to work now. Come on. And so it is coming now into understanding a place of rest. Now, this is what's interesting. The glory is the place of rest. 
The anointing is the realm of work. And, I, and I let me give you some illustrations. If you notice years ago when preachers are ministering, I, I, and I noticed this, when the Lord gave me that revelation 20-something years ago about the anointing, faith, the anointing, and the glory, I noticed that when I was ministering in the anointing, virtue would leave me. Mm. It would always leave me. I noticed that when the glory would come, <laughs> one, I'm not the one doing it. And that's one of the hardest things. I've had meetings where I've seen all kinds of things happen, and I didn't feel a thing. Because it wasn't coming from me. It is ministering from a place of rest. And I'm telling you, when you, when to, when you enter into a place of rest, you have to let go. God said, let me tell you something, this, this, was, this is interesting. When, when God did creation, he said it's finished. When Jesus died on the cross, Jesus said it's finished. Apparently, Jesus had to say it's finished because the devil never got the memo. So Jesus said it's finished. The only person who hasn't said it's finished is the Holy Spirit. Because he's still here. He's on the earth manifesting the finished work. And so this is the time right now where as we let go and enter into the glory of God, things become easy, not harder. Uh, let me tell you something. When you're in the glory, you don't work, you rest. I've learned that when you're stressed, it's because you're trying to figure out how to work it and it's not working in the dimensions you're working in. The secret is when you let go, the greatest compliment you can give God is to abandon yourself and let go. Because when you come let on, go, come on, come on. God takes it. Come on, come on, put your hands together, people. Thank you. What he's, Apostle is saying that the anointing, which is the power of God, is yeah. wor God working through mm -hmm. us. It's when God uses your hands, God uses your mouth, God uses your body. But when the glory of God comes and minister and come to a place, nothing to do with us is oh, God no. himself doing it. I have been in places and, and when I didn't touch anybody, I didn't pray for anybody, just the glory of God came down. God created a brand new knee, brand new eyes. Yes. Something happened. And mm. usually I prefer to get into that glory. <laughs> I want, that's the place of rest. That's what he was saying. We rest on the glory of God because it's God working, not us. And what we do, as God doing the miracles, I worship God. I mm. praise God. Is anybody worshiping God today? If you're watching right now, if you have any prayer requests, we're going to be praying for you. Our pastor, our Prophet Brian, myself, we're going to be praying for you. Please pick up the phone and give us a call. Let us know. We're going to be praying. We're about to pray in a minute. I want you to hear so many powerful things about what God is doing, what God is saying in this moment and this time. I know uh, this is a moment of rest, a time of rest. So I know a Prophet is going to be talking about the Semita year, what God is saying. How many years? What, what is going to happen? What about America? I know you heard some words for America. I want you to come back and let's go to New Wine Music. Can you put your hand together? <laughs> New Wine Worship. I understand. I know you're watching right now. If you have anything, any prayer request, we're going to be praying for you. I know Jesus is the healer. Jesus on the cross said it is finished. Your healing is finished. Your deliverance is finished. It's done. Amen. It's just for you to appropriate what God did on the cross. Could you believe an amen? Can you say an amen to that? Amen. New wine worship. Jesus the Messiah. Can you put your hand together, people? Jesus the Messiah. Come on. Come on, everybody in this place has to praise the name of Jesus because it's the only one that has power. He has been given power and authority in heaven and in earth and below. Come on. The name above every name, God's glory living in us. Son of the Lord of the earth, Jesus is. Who conquered sin and the grave, giving us the victory. And in this freedom we shall, Jesus is alive. This is my Jesus. Come on, sing with me. The name above every name, God's glory living in us. Son of the Lord of the earth, Jesus is. Who conquered sin and the grave, giving us the victory. And in this freedom we shall, Jesus is alive. Lifting up the name of Jesus, and people all over the world will sing His praise. We're lifting up the name of 
Come on, put your hands together. Jesus is alive now. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Apostle Rini, tell me, what else are you hearing from God for this year? This is what I'm hearing from the Lord regarding his people, that there is a new, there is a new economy breaking forth. Come on. And it's an, it's an economy that we've never seen. Now, I just feel led to say this. Even as I'm speaking right now, God right now is releasing the entrepreneur spirit in the church as never before because what's happened through what everybody has gone through, it, is break, it has broken our dependency on the system of man. And we're now coming into a new economy. When the Bible says, in my father's house are many mansions, if it were not so, I wouldn't have told you so. Do you know that original word mansion is the word economy? Mm. So there are economies. And what's Come happening on. right Come now on. is this. We're trying to live in the past. And we don't understand that a new economy is breaking forth. And so that's why there are things God is putting in our spirit for us to do that we've never heard before. If you want to know where your wealth is, your wealth is tied to your purpose. And that's why God speaks to us seasonally. I, I, can I just say, I just yes, feel yes, led to say this, because I believe this is important. See, one of the things, one of the failures of what's happening in the body of Christ is this. We've taught the people sowing and reaping, but we've never taught them business. We've taught them sowing and reaping, but we've never taught them wealth. Now, let me give you an example. You know, a wealthy person will socialize with you, but they won't fellowship with you. Because to fellowship with somebody, you've got to be on the same level. And so some of us have been around wealth, but we're not in partnership with it. What's happening right now is this. In this economy, God is making his people the head, not the tail, the above, not the beneath. And I must tell you this right now, in on, this year, on. in this year, heaven has declared war on our debt. Come on. 
Yes, yes. And that yes. has to be a rhema word. Yes, God yes. wants you more out of Come debt yes. than you want to get out of debt yes. so that the enemy will have no chains or holes on your finances. This is the time right now that God... I, 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 Come on, come on, go, go, go. This is the time right now where we understand that God is angry at the economical systems of man. They've fallen flat on their faces, but I'm telling you right now, the kingdom of God is coming forth in ways and dimensions we have never seen. Heaven has declared war on your debt. So right about now, right about now, there are things... There are things about to turn around Come on, yes. that God's people have never seen before. And, not, and what God is doing right now is this, in the seasons that we're in, because I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be good and let you touch on it. What God is doing <laughs> is this, is that he is aligning. There's never been a time, never been a time where the Hebraic calendar Come on. is yes, actually yes. aligned to the calendar that we follow. Yes, yes. Now, when you see things begin to align, when things are aligned, you begin to appropriate things. So there are things right now we are going to appropriate because they have fallen into place because there is synchronicity. So this is the time right now where we have to be aware of what God is doing. Are you aligned with God? Are you aligned with the now word of God? Come on. Can you put your hand together? Amen. Apostle, you are saying that. My God, there is such a presence of God in this place. The atmosphere is electric. Something is about to be released upon your life. Miracles, signs, and wonders. God is about to speak to you. God is about to do something special. We welcome you, and I want you to be ready. I want you to receive and prepare your heart. How to prepare for your season. How can you prepare? God is doing something special in your life, and I want you to be ready. If you have your phone, please give us a call. Give us a call right now. Let us know. What's the miracle? What's, what, what you want from God today? I got... Central and South America. Welcome to the number one Christian network in the world. Joining us from Atlanta, Georgia, are founder of Rennie McLean Ministries, Apostle Rennie McLean. From King Jesus Ministries, Dr. Joel Kazoria. Founder of Brian Karn Ministries, Prophet Brian Korn. From King Jesus Ministries, the New Wine Worship Team. Ready to take the call. Powerful man of God on the stage, and I'm very sure, I'm very sure God will do something special. Can I hear an amen from you? So I understand God is moving. You know, when we get to the first, the beginning of the year, everybody's asking, what is the will of God for my life? What God is saying to me? I know you want to hear from God. I know what you, you want to hear what, what God is saying and what God is doing. Remember what the book of Revelation says? What, he says what the Spirit is saying to the church. So you are asking question, God, I want you to speak to me. Because it's important that you discern the times and season, seasons that we're living in now. So let's get ready. I know. Can, can you put your hand together, people here? Prayer partners around America.
Praise the Lord covers the major Christian events in America and across the world from the heart of Europe. To the tip of Africa. From the centers of Asia. Praise the Lord. 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 Praise